Every time we weigh anchor, hoist the sails, and point our bow towards the empty horizon, we are choosing to contend with nature. Simply put, we use our knowledge and skill to harness the wind and to move our home. But it's not always that simple, and often nature seems to have other plans. Assuming we're able to overcome these challenges, we still need to keep all of the boat's systems running, from waste management to navigation instruments, water filtration, and power generation. It's only once we overcome all of these challenges that we're able to navigate our floating home to far off destinations. Now, one of the reasons that we do all of this is so that we can learn about the different ways that people live all over the world. And this week, we meet someone who has also chosen to live a life full of challenges from Mother Nature. Living off the land on a remote Greek island is a life full of hardship, but it is also full of beauty and meaning. It is a life lived close to nature, with all of the good and bad that comes with that. Moving all these rocks by hands. What in the world? <laughs> but what would lead someone to choose to leave their modern life behind and raise a family on a remote island farm? Wow, it's wet out there. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been in a marina where I'm so exposed to the weather. The only thing between us and the ocean is like this three foot tall, 10 foot wide little breakwater and that's it. The boat's not bouncing around too bad, but like, man, that's the ocean <laughs> right there, you know? Now we've been sailing in Greece for a couple months now, and we are currently making our way through the Cyclades Islands in the Aegean. We have loved sailing in Greece. It's an extremely beautiful country with literally thousands of incredible islands to explore. The one drawback so far has been just how crowded things got during the summer. It was complete chaos. But now that it's fall, Greece feels like a completely different place. The crowds are gone and the anchorages are empty. But there is a catch. Storms are becoming more and more frequent. And it's beginning to feel like we only have a day or two of decent weather between each bout of wind and rain. So that's why we're slowly making our way towards Turkey, where in another week or two, we'll be seeking protection from all these winter storms and hunkering down until the spring. But for now, we're going to enjoy having these islands just about all to ourselves. All right, good morning. So before we do anything fun today, I've got to replace our seagull fresh water filter cartridge. So all the fresh water that comes out of our tanks, if we want to drink it, it goes through this little fresh water drinking spigot. And this filter will make sure that no matter what's going on in there, it's really good to drink. Now we've been using our water maker for all of our fresh water needs for a while now, but this filter makes sure that when we're in a marina like we are now, that we're able to drink the water that comes from the dock no matter what. Okay, cool. We're all set. So let's test that, see how it went. Okay, that works. Do we have any leaks? Okay, no leaks. Yeah, tastes great. So this works great because tap water around the world varies significantly. Some places it's delicious and healthy for you. Some places it's terrible, but most places are somewhere in between. And something like this just gives me a whole lot more peace of mind. Later on, we traveled inland to the Paravoli Naxian farm to meet with our friend Nikos. Nikos and his family own and operate this small farm. And while in the past they used to sell their crops for a profit, they now mostly use it to grow their own food, as well as provide excursions for tourists to give them a glimpse into the traditional Naxian way of life. So we'll start here with my farm animals. We have some pigs. Hello, cuties. How old are they? Seven months. Really? They're babies. How old do they live until before you? Uh, eight to nine months. Do you ever feel bad eating them? Like, do you ever become friends with them? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon tastes pretty good though. So. Yeah. Sorry guys. These are the young ones. That's why we keep them inside. We have free only the males and the females. So we keep the males for the meat and the females for their eggs. And how many do you have? Do you know? There's a lot. About 40. <laughs> 
And so how about these olives? Are they getting close to uh, being picked? They are ready. This one is only used for its olive oil. You are able also to eat it, but it doesn't work too. They are very, very small. That's cool, yes. You can try it now, it's very bitter. <laughs> so Whoa. it's not eatable. Wow, it is crazy how Whoa. oily Whoa, it is. That's, yeah. that's so neat. It's very peaceful out here. Yeah, and it's only 10 minutes from town. Yeah, it feels like we're very far away from town. What's the peacock for? Just for beauty. Really? They have also oh, baby. two babies. That's so cute. That is awesome. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a baby peacock. Yeah, this is the area where we produce the potatoes here in my farm. These are potatoes from uh, from June. Yeah. We're gonna cook with these ones, for example. Oh, cool. You see the size? Yeah. No wonder that that's been a staple crop here, though, because I've heard that Noxos is unique because it's self-sufficient. Exactly, and we give also our products to the islands nearby, to all over the Greece. It depends what the product is. Wow, so when your grandfather bought this land, this was all just one slope. And so they made retaining wall and then flat and then retaining wall. All by hands, no machines. Yeah, yeah. When they were doing that before 70, 80 years, there weren't any machines. And so all those stones came from the that actual area, yes. mountain. Moving all these rocks by hands. Yeah. I cannot take a big rock like that with my hands. Look, yeah, very, look at that. Big. That thing is, must weigh, I mean, a hundred pounds. More than hundred. And what kind of man was your fa uh, grandfather? They were working all the day. So they were waking up five in the morning and they were working until nine, eight. But they had also the energy after that to go in uh, for a drink, to go to local parties. And then again, the next day to go and work. And he has, Nine kids, so he, has, he had energy for a lot, lot of things. Not only. Nine yeah, kids. Yeah. So he spends all day yeah. carrying large stones to build walls, then goes out, parties, and then comes back and takes care of nine kids. <laughs> they didn't have television, that's why. Yeah. yeah totally. So then, Nico, did you want to run this farm ever since you were a kid? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I had other plans. Yeah. So I've studied software engineer. After when I uh, finished uh, the university, I moved to Athens. It was easy for me to find a job there and work as a software engineer, but I didn't like the life in a big town. So after nine months I quit and then I came back here. And then it came up the idea for me to do this experience. So because I liked that lifestyle on the past, to be free, I want my kids to do the same, mm -hmm. to feel free. It was fascinating to me that in a way, Nikos's father and grandfather worked hard all their lives in the hopes that one day, one of their children like Nikos wouldn't have to live the hard life of a farmer. And yet when given the opportunity, Nikos decided that he preferred this harsh yet beautiful existence. It really makes me think about how in a way the grass is always greener and that what we think of as progress is not always a step in the right direction. All right, so we are getting ready to finally cook everything that we just picked, and I'm really excited my mouth is watering. So what are we starting <laughs> off with? We call this this kleftiko. It means uh, goat with peppers, local cheese, uh, local herbs, and nuts and potatoes. Naxos, like many Greek islands, has a long tradition of livestock farming, and goats in particular have thrived on this island with its rugged terrain and limited water. And in fact, much of Greece is covered in this kind of landscape, making goat meat a common aspect of Greek cuisine. And how did you learn how to cook? From my grandmother. Does your wife like that you cook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love cooking outside. It feels so nice to have the breeze go by. Now we're gonna add our cheese. Can I do a taste test to make sure it's safe for all of yeah. us? <laughs> Oh my God. I think I'm gonna need to do this. <laughs> it's really good. Snaxian <laughs> kefalotiri. It's one of the best cheeses in, in the world. Now we're gonna add uh, our herbs. And so this is all grown on your farm as well? Wild, we don't grow them. Wow. My gosh, it looks so pretty. <laughs> and so at the end, the base of every meal here in Greece, olive oil. And this is from your farm? Exactly. Wow. Perfect. Wow. Respect. Yeah. It's like half a bottle <laughs> of olive yeah. oil. Yeah, it's crazy. You can hear the sizzling already. You can feel the heat coming all the way 
to like here. So now we're gonna start preparing zucchini fritters. Oh, that feels so good. And maybe that's why I like cooking. There's a lot of like stress relief involved. Cover them with flour from both sides so they will not get burnt. Now we're gonna do the same process with cucumber to prepare the tzatziki, our most famous dip here in Greece. This simple yet delicious sauce is made from yogurt, cucumbers, garlic, olive oil, and often dill or mint. It is so prolific in Greek cuisine that I honestly don't think we've had a single meal here that wasn't served with tzatziki. Okay, so now we get to see what all the hype is about these Noxian potatoes. We're gonna taste them in olive oil, fry it in wood fire. And then we're gonna keep some of them to prepare an action omelette. Oh yeah, that looks good, man. <laughs> yes. With the most famous cheese that we have here in Axos, the Naxian Graviera, we're gonna prepare also cheese pie. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Whoa. Meli, it's honey. Honey, yeah. Meli. Meli. <laughs> it looks good, man. Yeah, it looks delicious. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is insane. So much food for us. Thank you so much for yeah. teaching us how to do all this. <laughs> you hear that? Wow. Dessert first. <laughs> good. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you. So this is the, the fritter. Check that out. That looks cool. delicious. You want some? Mm. Yeah, that's excellent. So we picked these today, huh? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Get it in there, baby. Nice. Is that good? Man, bub, mm. this is a feast. Mm -hmm. We haven't even gotten into the goat yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my whoa, gosh. whoa, whoa. Lay it on me, Nikos. Mm. Feel like we could feed your whole village with this. <laughs> <laughs> She's already opening her mouth. Mm. Mm. Potatoes. It's so tender. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yamas. Cheers. Yamas. 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 <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm getting ready to get underway today and leave this beautiful harbor. And I was just thinking like, I love early mornings in small little harbors like this. Like, especially this time of year, it's kind of chilly, but not cold. The sky is like super blue. The weather is beautiful. People are getting ready. Fishermen are getting on their boats and getting ready to head out to sea. And I love the atmosphere. I love the vibe. Yeah, this is a really cool place. So we are getting ready to head down to a nearby island called Kofunisi, or at least I think that's how it's pronounced. And uh, yeah, we're saying goodbye to Noxos. You ready to sail? You look very pretty. Okay, bud, you ready? Yep. Okay, y'all set, baby? Okay, let's go. Hey, buddy. Sailing. Sailing. Ah, it feels good. Now that she's getting older, I can actually help you again. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. She was really good that whole time. Good job, baby. Yeah, I think the sleep training is really working. She's able to take an hour-long nap all by herself today, mm -hmm. which means I got an hour to do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This is a really nice day for sailing. I'm very happy with the weather, too. If this is what November is, I can handle it. Oh, so it's like, yeah, I'm with you, bro. Nothing like looking out on the deep blue sea, feeling the salt air through my hair. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I gotta say, there are a lot of days where I'm like, what the hell are we doing with a baby on a boat? But today is not one of them. Yeah, she's having such a good time. Yeah. Wow. She's doing pretty good. She gets her butt up, but then she gets stuck. She's like, well, now what? Yeah, it's just cool experiencing the excitement and joy of sailing all over again with Isa. Because I, I feel like I was getting to a point in sailing where 
the days kind of blur into one into another and, and every sale is unique and beautiful mm -hmm. but I don't know something about having a baby makes me really really appreciate it even more and like see it in a new way again you gonna change our course yeah looks like we're gonna get there at 5.30, which is kind of a problem, because that's right after sunset. So we're gonna have to try to go a little bit faster, okay? Yeah? I know I've said this a lot lately, but I am constantly wondering if we are doing the right thing, trying to raise a family out on the water. But meeting Nikos and seeing how even though the lifestyle he has chosen is much harder in some ways, he and his family seems to prefer those hardships over the alternative. Given everything they have to sacrifice to live this lifestyle, it's really inspiring to me to see a family that finds so much beauty amongst the struggle and who are eager to take on the challenge. Hey guys, thanks for watching the episode. I wanted to tell you real quick that we finally have Atticus 2 swag out. We don't have much. We're hoping to have more in the near future, but just in time for the holidays, we have Atticus 2 t-shirts, hoodies, all kinds of good stuff. So if you wanna get yourself or a loved one a Project Atticus shirt for the holidays, then definitely click on the link in the description below. You also may see the swag and merch down below this video. You can just click on it that way too. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy the merch and we will catch you guys next week.